Sali Ipupa, best known as the Congolese Prince of Rumba. After a 10 year long career, Sali Ipupa has set himself a goal of becoming the first star from his country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, to conquer the world market. Where the event took place on Saturday has a capacity of 80,000. Today, we are going to be diving into the history, the accomplishments of the living legend, Fali. Do you know how hard it is for an African artist from French Africa to succeed in the Western English-speaking world to an English-speaking audience and industry? While it is extremely difficult, it seems that there is one per generation who manages to get close to the glass ceiling. But one artist in our lifetime may be able to crack the glass. Some people say that Kofi Lomide walked so Fali could run. Maybe Fali is running so another artist can sprint. Many may find the statement I've just made offensive as it is limiting Fali's career and potential. As Fali himself has a goal not just to crack the glass ceiling but break it apart and get to the other side. Fali is a man whose talent is clear but his vision and dreams for himself and his career can seem from the outsider looking in outlandish unattainable, unrealistic for Congolese artists. But Fali has tapped into the international market, has sold millions of records, sold out concert arenas. But who is he? How did he do this? How did he accomplish so much that others thought to be unbelievable, unattainable, un? realistic. What are his critics? What do his critics think of this? What is Fali's next step? Fali Bupa Nasimba, also known simply as Fali Bupa, was born on December the 14th, 1977, in the bustling city of Kishasa, Zaire, now known as Democratic Republic of Congo in Central Africa. Fali's journey is one of resilience, passion, talent, and artistic revolution. His early life was full of music in the bustling community of Bandalungwa, surrounded by music from the nightclubs, the bars, and the churches, which was all critical in his musical development, but most of all, critical to his love of music, not just any music, Congolese music. At the time, Bangalungwa was seen as the music district of Kishasa. He was born to his parents and grew alongside his two sisters and a brother. Sali so had his challenges, which was dealing with the insecurities that come with having a stutter and a lisp throughout his childhood which caused him to have a shyness about him in his adulthood. However, his lisp and stutter has never stopped him from going forward and pursuing his dreams. As his passion for music was unmistakable, he was particularly drawn to the traditional rhythms of the drums and captivated by the melodies of the church choir. His early exploration began in the streets of Kishasa, where he experimented with different instruments and different sounds, which ended up setting the stage for his later successes. Many are not aware, but Fali has a noble family connection to a musical legend, as Fali is the nephew of Sylvia Mabata, who is married to the Congolese legend, singer, songwriter, Wera Son. Sali was inspired 
by Wenge Musica Band, Nyoka Longo and many others. But his journey to fame was not straightforward. Going against his parents' wishes to go and pursue a career in medicine, Salih remained steadfast that he was going to pursue a career in music. He embedded himself in the local music scene by joining various orchestras and groups. Through his experiences, he gained a multitude of different talents and he was seen as a multi-talented artist. As he was not only a singer, but he was a dancer and an atalaku, which is a showman, a hype man. His participation in groups like Flash Success, New City, not only honed in his artistic abilities, but also deepened his love and commitment to the craft of music. I knew since I was young, it's true that I sang in a church because everyone in my family sang in a church. There was always music in my house, especially on Sunday. And from there, I started singing in small neighborhood groups. While it is true that in church, they have a lot of harmonies, a lot of carol singing, but it was also very true that the music I heard in the streets that gave me a lot more of the models of harmony of singing. The biggest turning point in his career is when he joined the renowned group ran by the legend Kofi Olomide. The group is Katela Tan. From 1999 to 2006, Fali was a staple within this group. In this period, Fali embraced growth and learning. I became a professional there. This was the first time I traveled to do a concert. So you learn a lot of things about contracts, big recording studios. Katera Tan and Kofi Lomide was a great school for me. Fali's first album, Duat Shemen, in 2006, which translates to Right Path, was a sounding success and succeeded and achieved gold status with many collaborations and the hit single, Liputa, showcased his unique blend of Congolese rumba, Zouk, Dombolo, all earned him widespread acclaim. He continued on this trend of mixing traditional sounds with contemporary influences, which solidified his status in African music as an icon. Fali's not just a musician, he is an individual that understands his responsibility to the world around him through his charitable work. He inspires a generation of Africans, which has been acknowledged through his countless awards, through his MTV awards, through his historical SNEP Global Certificate, which all underscore his remarkable contribution to the music industry. Fali's story is one of resilience, talent, cultural pride, and as the first Congolese artist to achieve the global success that he has achieved so far while remaining and maintaining his musical cultural heritage of the Congo. Duat Shemel was not just an album, it was a triumph of musical ingenuity. He sold over 100,000 copies and achieved a gold record. Fali did everything right that led to the success of his album. This was a time where the majority of Congolese youths outside of Congo who were born in the West or was raised in the West at a young age did not feel as connected to Congolese music. And it was just something that they heard their parents listen to. As the front men of the Congolese band and music were the same age as their parents or older. As good as the music was, it didn't feel as evolved. It didn't feel new. It didn't feel 
Morde. Philosophie, philosophie, c'est ça, mon Dieu. Before 2005, Africa wasn't cool. Being African was seen as a joke, as many in the West were denouncing their African ancestry, heritage, and claiming to be Caribbean, due to the new sounds of dancehall, which was dominating the Western world, which started around the 2000s. Caribbean artists were cool. They had style. They had a great mix of American East Coast, New York style, but still embodied the Caribbean swagger. Dancehall, also known as Bashman, took over. As Africans enjoyed dancehall, there was still a disconnect, as there was still a huge difference in culture, and African youths were constantly being reminded by Caribbean youths. In the playground, why are you begging it? You're not Caribbean. And we had nothing to say until Afrobeats. Nigerian and Ghanaian artists smashed onto the scene with modern, Western and African-infused sounds. Such artists as P-Square, J Martin, Debanj, Star Plus, to name a few. But there was still a disconnect for those youths from French Africa, as they didn't have anyone to represent them. And in the West, they needed a French African artist, a Congolese artist with Congolese music that tapped into their heritage, that gave them the sense of pride that they needed. And Fali Pupa heard their cries. His first album was popular because it tapped into each and every generation. Fali was cool. Fali's music was fresh. He didn't do things that were typical. For example, he didn't have a band. The focus was only on him, no distractions. He even stopped bleaching, which appealed to a Western audience, a Western Congolese audience. He wore his trousers low, which may sound unusual because everyone wears their trousers low. But Congolese men didn't wear their trousers low, but Fali did. From his debut single, Fali has been renowned as a trendsetter. He understood his assignment and he did it effectively. As he understood earlier on that he was dealing with a new generation, a new generation who experienced globalization, who experienced the internet and what was revolutionary about him and that led to his evolution and his success is that early on in his career, he understood the power of the internet. I started using the computer in 2004 when I earned some money. I opened a blog in 2006 when Dwight Chemin was released. I've had a Facebook page since 2007. As for my Instagram account, it is the most visited in the Democratic Republic of Congo with more than 3,000 visits per day. Fali understood the internet and he knew how the internet could benefit him, but he ensured that he didn't get lost in globalization, that he still stayed true to who he is, which is a proud Congolese artist. After the release of his first solo album, Fali began to explore an international audience and raising his international global profile with early collaboration with high profile artists from the United States, such as Olivia from 50 Cent's G-Unit. This was never done. This was never seen. And this only drew his Congolese Western born and Western raised fans closer to him and also introduced a whole new group of people to his music. Fali's career continued to flourish as he performed across Europe and Africa. He was featured in many African artists' music and he performed in countries such as France, Belgium, Germany and the United States. 
Arsenal de Melodies was his second album, which sold over 90,000 to a French audience. However, his global calculation is beyond this. In April 2013, he signed a contract with the multinational AZ Universal onwards, which marked a significant milestone. With Universal, Fali released Power Kozolika, which was an album with the interesting blend of Congolese rumba and contemporary rap, which received critical acclaim. I want us to listen to African music because I have this culture in my blood, which modulates for the ears of the whole world. In 2024, Fali's single, Original, was released, which was a staple of African folk and Congolese music style of its traditional and most traditional form. At this time, his participation in the Global Citizen Earth Day concert in Washington in 2015 was also a remarkable achievement, showcasing his music to a global audience. Fali has so many people rooting for him, as many believe that he can conquer the French European charts and beyond. In 2016 and 2017 was a landmark years, marking the release of Docos. This album was seen as a bold venture into the urban scene which featured a diverse style and collaboration with many artists such as Buba and Naya Nakamura. Dokos was a critical and commercial success, earning him a gold certificate from the SNEP, making him the first Congolese artist based in Kishasa to achieve this. However, as successful as Tokos was, it received many criticisms. As many people believe that with this album, it marks the beginning of the end. That Fali is losing touch with his Congolese roots. He's trying too hard to appeal to a wider audience and he will forget where he came from, therefore forget what made him successful. Fali is networking internationally and gaining fame, which is great for his career and for a Congolese artist, but musically, he's not at his best. His album, Tokos, was a commercial hit, but artistically weak. I'm waiting for the next album to judge if he still got it. Fali doesn't need to chase the European market. Being unapologetically authentic is more appealing. If he stays true to himself, he will be more globally famous. Crossover in music shouldn't be forced, but natural. Fully's current approach is more harmful than helpful to our music. Trying to Americanize our music is a mistake. We should focus on perfecting our own style rather than conforming to others. Fali's efforts to appeal to American audience won't work. He should focus on creating more authentic music. And if it becomes popular globally, it should be organic. Tokos is a lazy album with no innovation. Music suffers when the quality is overlooked in order to mimic others. Our music is already international. It does not need to mimic American style. Fali is failing to live up to his potential. Music should be authentic, not made with the intent to hit a Pacific market. Nigerian artists succeed because they stay true to their roots. Droit Chemin is Fali's only fully satisfying album. Dokos was disappointing, over commercialized and lacks musical depth. He needs to return to his artistic roots, which is Bumba. Fali is surrounded by yes men who praise everything that he does, but we need to be realistic about his artistic direction and impact. 
Fali does not tend to respond to his critics, but in an earlier interview, he has said the following. In Congolese music, there are many varieties. They are the dancing varieties. They are the singing varieties. In that tradition, I sing love songs with a lot of words and a lot of music. Of course, in Congolese music, you have to make people dance. But I have to say that my strongest side is my rumba side. On my albums, there's always a couple of songs that really make people move. But most of them are rumba songs. Rumba is the base of my music and I will always remain loyal to the music I started with. When compared with Afrobeats, Fali said, first of all, in my music, there is no Afrobeats. It's Congolese music, authentic, urban. It's international pop, not Afrobeats. And that's what makes my music popular. As far as comparisons between Congolese music and Afrobeats, Afrobeats is coming along strong. That's something that we admire and respect. Although Afrobeats does have the advantage of singing in English. That's clearly an advantage when it comes to promoting in England and America and the rest of the world. But I respect their success and it is good African music. Fali Pupa's life and career offers a profound lesson that can inspire and guide us all in the pursuit of our own personal and professional dreams. Pursuing passion relentlessly, Fali's journey underscores the importance of following one's passion with diligence. Despite challenges and initial setback, he remained steadfast in his love for music. This teaches us to stay relentless in our passions, even if the path is not clear, an eagerness to learn and grow. In every environment, with every band, with every mentor, with every surrounding, Fali used it as an opportunity to learn and grow. And this mentality has led to him excelling in his field. Innovation and versatility. Fali's ability to blend traditional Congolese rhythms with contemporary genres highlights the importance of the versatile. Embracing change and being open to new ideas can only lead to groundbreaking achievements and success. In Fali's role as UNICEF ambassador, he states, my motivation was just that I wanted to help. We live in a challenging world and it is important for we as artists to use our image, our focus, our energy to try to create some solutions to all the problems that exist in the world. We can't accept these things. We have to be ambassadors. This can show us that a sense of purpose does not just have to come from our dreams. Our sense of purpose can also come from helping and serving others. Cultural pride. Fali's music is deep rooted in Congolese heritage, showcasing the beauty and richness of his culture. Fali teaches us that we must always embrace and take pride in our own backgrounds and in our own uniqueness, as this will be a strength, a compass, in order to navigate this challenging world. And our culture and our cultural pride, this perspective, would give you strength. In summary, Fali Pupa's life teaches us the power of passion, learning, innovation, resilience, and service. His stories so far remind us to reach for our dreams, but with the understanding that it's not just about achieving personal success, but making a difference, a meaningful contribution to the world around us and the legacy we leave behind. As challenging as things have been for him to reach the global market and achieve all of his dreams, 
But if Fanny was to stop now, stop music today, he will still be a legend. He has accomplished so much. It's exciting to see and experience what he could possibly achieve next. While discussing the current conflict and instability in Congo, Fali said, it has always amazed me that out of such sadness comes such joyful music. It is a kind of paradox. Our music is phenomenal for sure. Our history is phenomenal too. It's very complicated, but well, we have to have hope. We have to believe.